Good afternoon. My name is Joseph Lloyd and I source cars for people on a professional basis. Although most of the cars I source are between £1,000 and £5,000, very often I've been asked to show something a little bit cheaper on the channel and so I came up with no budget reviews. The series where we look at cars that you can buy in good condition with an MOT for under a thousand pounds and you can enjoy driving. We don't film this in an expensive manner, we don't use separate microphones, we don't use do it head tripods, we don't even use a DSLR but we do have a lot of fun. Well, viewers, it's been a while since we've had a uh, first-generation BMW Mini on the channel. In fact, the only one we've had so far belongs to Mr. Richardson from Viewers Driving, and it's a Y registration one, uh, a uh, pre-production or pilot build car from 2001. This is a much later first-generation BMW Mini, uh, known as the R53 model, the Cooper S, which was made in 2005. This happens to be a facelift one as well, so actually it's... Uh, a little bit different from that original one. This has the 170 horsepower engine. The earlier Cooper S's that came out in 2002 had the 163. It's uh, owned by Thomas, who has had this car for a really long time, and it's done 130,000 miles. It looks, to my mind, it looks great actually. But he keeps telling me there's imperfections in this paint and things like that, but. I gather most of this is original paint. The only thing that's been done to this in terms of painting it is addressing some lack appeal. As you can see, it's uh, been supplied by Croker and Bridger uh, with branches in London and Turin. Don't think too much about that second Italian job uh, film, by the way, viewers. Uh, it's not very good. Just watch the first one. That's my advice. So yes, yeah, little twin exhaust down there at the bottom. That looks really good uh, as far as I'm concerned. Let's open this up. Now the boot, not even 200 litres I don't think in these. It's uh, it's quite small. And also made even smaller by this 6 CD changer in it. If we open this up, down here we just don't really find very much at all. In fact the battery is actually there. So you have to use the canister of foam if you have a flat tyre. Which is a bit of a problem. Never mind. Yeah, so I suppose a similar boot size to like a Peugeot 107 or something like that, but was available actually at the time that this car was registered in 2005. We've got uh, the chili pack on this car. So we've got these larger alloy wheels, they're 17 inches. Um, the suspension of this car is actually a little bit different from the standard Cooper S as well. Also, this car, I'm not sure if it's part of a chili pack for the car or not, but it's got a limited slip differential in it. So that should be interesting. Fuel filler cap on this side. Um, I think Frank Stevenson designed this and he did a fantastic job, I think. Um, obviously very heavily criticised for just being like a sort of a, a large bloated version of the classic design. But because these cars are so old now and uh, the first R50s came out 22 years ago, actually this is a bit of a classic in its own right. Let's open up this sort of retro looking door handles. I personally think this car looks looks better than the current generation R55 and R56 minis. Um, that's just my opinion. Um, the uh, R56 that I drove quite recently, in fact last month, was uh, was it was a good car. But I think I prefer this personally because this is the Cooper S. We've actually got some differences uh, from the standard R50 minis, uh, such as the dials. In the standard R50, the speedometer famously is in the middle because that's where it was in a lot of the classic minis. And not all of them, but um, in many of them it was actually in the middle. So in this one we've got uh, the fuel gauge, the uh, engine temperature gauge, and uh, the oil pressure gauge, and um, oil temperature are in the middle, where the speedo would be, which is, uh, which is interesting. And then um, we've got the uh, controls here, which look a little bit like the old toggle switches on a lot of the classic minis would have been like this, but these little guards here. So if you example, get thrown forward a little bit, your knees don't get absolutely <laughs> destroyed by the switches. 
Um, no climate control, we have got air conditioning in here and the tape player with the uh, CD changer is just down there. This car's had an aftermarket parrot Bluetooth kit fitted to it because I don't think that you could get Bluetooth with uh, with these uh, back in 2005 and this car was actually used on a daily basis for quite a long time. After seeing a second there'd be secret mission documents going there but we've got some cup holders and a storage place there for a biro and some sunglasses I imagine. There's no sunglasses holder up here. Um, have we got an electrochromatic mirror? Yes, we have actually. A lot of BMWs have appeared had those. And I quite like on this car, we've got the uh, little lights on the indicator stalk and also on the end of the uh, wipers. I think that one's for low screen wash actually. Uh, that red one there's for the, um, the alarm. Six speed manual in this one. This is a, a Getrog gearbox. The early R50s, until about 2004, actually had the same R65 gearbox that was introduced in the R8 200 in 1989 and then was used in all sorts of other Rovers and some MGs uh, until about 2003 when actually BMW owned the gearbox factory and started putting the price up. So they went to Ford for uh, a lot of models up to 1.6 litre petrols. If we look... Uh, here we can see the classic interior door handle. I think actually quite a few um, modern minis have those as well. Door pockets are interesting, there's sort of frame on there. So um, if you have very big things like maps, which would have been quite um, sort of popular still back in 2005, then that's would be uh, you know, a good place to have them. Normal handbrake, which is good. Um, this key is obviously a facelifted car, so it looks a bit different, but the early ones look very similar to Rev 75 key. Uh, yeah, I like this mirror switch down there. This has an armrest, which, if it were me, I'd be just leaving it up here. I, I don't think I'd be using that. Um, it gets in the way of pulling the handbrake on. But, uh, you know, some, some people like those sort of things, don't they? Um, I like this sort of material on, on here, although it's actually plastic. It's not metal or anything. And these kind of uh, eyeball vents that uh, open like so. And you've got a footrest down there. Think of everything. Right, um, we'll s get Mr. Richard Dogs out in a second. First of all, though, I think it's time to do what Mr. Manning from Matty's Cars wants me to do, get in the back of a very cramped three-door car. Okay, viewers, I didn't think I was going to enjoy this, and I don't think I am. I think we're going to have to... Oh, no. Ugh. Ugh. That's just like Roger Moore and a view to a kill. Oh, or every stunt double. Right, we've got a little cup holder here. Uh, we've actually got even better places to put odds and ends on either side as well. Um, that, annoyingly, is not leather. It's um, just plastic. Right, dare I even put this back? Ah! No, I don't think I will because uh, I'm not going to have any knee room. Yes. Headroom's actually all right. That's not the issue. It's, um, it's the leg room of which there is virtually none. Um, yeah, that's not good, is it, viewers? And we've got this um, little net thing in the place of a map pocket. And only two seats, of course. Um, there's really not room for a per passenger anyway. Has got Isofix, though. That's, uh, that's very handy, isn't it? Although trying to get a child seat in the back of this is going to be difficult. Maybe you uh, maybe get a countryman or, you know, the later um, five-door for current generation if you... You know, want to do something like that. Right, let me free myself and my self-imposed prison. Actually, we've got this brochure here, which uh, is quite handy. This brochure is, I think, uh, contemporary with this. Um, there's no date on that. I think, I think it's from about 2004, 2005. We can see some uh, dimensions, technical detail. Oh, this is quite handy. There's one particular car we're going to have to skip, aren't we, viewers? Because uh, don't talk about them on the channel. But, yeah, the Mini 1 that had um, 90 um, horsepower. Mini Cooper had 115 horsepower. And this Cooper S, yeah, it's definitely a facelifted one, isn't it? Had uh, 170 horsepower. And the fuel consumption of uh, this one um, combined, ooh, gosh, it's not, it's not very good, is it? It's, uh, it's only about 33 miles per gallon. And this is on the old, um, any DC stuff, but there's all the sort of equipment, loads and loads of different like options. You can go option, 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 
Um, but yeah, it's interesting, isn't it? Right, let me just get my secret mission documents out, viewers. Okay, viewers. Oh, me secret mission documents gonna go in this glove box. Oh, yes. <laughs> Very suitable for spy work. <laughs> and it even matches the colour of the car, too. Okay, let's have a look at the engine. So, weirdly, the headlamps lift up with the bonnet. I think they might have experimented with leaving those in place, but it would have meant the engine access on the car would have been really, really poor. So, yes, it's, it's, it's a little bit actually cramped in here, and the supercharger on the top doesn't really make that any better. But what you can see here is that that is a real intake, you can actually see daylight through that, so that's a functional piece of engineering rather than just a style thing. It's actually functional, which is good, it keeps the supercharger nice and cool. So this is the 1.6 Tritec engine, um, built in South America, co-development between uh, BMW and Chrysler. A lot of people said they should use the K-Series, and in fact a lot of the engineering was not done by BMW, a lot of the engineering was done by the Rover Group and uh, they wanted to use the K-Series, but BMW said, no, we're going to use this, um, which is this Tritec engine, uh, as used, I think, in some models of the PT Cruiser, and then later developed by Fiat into their end engine called the E-Torque engine, that was used in things like the Tipo until very recently. Um, they do have a camber on them. I, doing a camber on this is going to be a nightmare, isn't it? But they do have one. Um, so just be sort of wary of that. This car's in exceptional condition, but uh, you know you can have electrical problems and things like that inside here. So just be sort of wary of that kind of thing when you're buying one, particularly if you're going to be buying an R50 for no budget reviews money, um, which is possible, but possibly you'll advise as well. One really weird thing is the screen wash is just there. <laughs> it's very strange. Um, and the battery's actually in the boot as well, so there wasn't any room under here for it. Oh yeah, there's another one here as well. Wow. Interesting. Right, let me stop wittering and uh, we shall go for a drive, viewers. Oh, viewers. This is a lot of fun, isn't it? You can actually see the old pressure gauge moving as you accelerate. <laughs> I wonder if. The same engineers who worked on the MGZ cars in 2000-2001 would have used these roads for the, the Gaiden and Warwickshire because we're in the uh, fuel power gathering today at uh, Jump's Garage in Kyneton and we're not too far from, from Gaiden here at all. I don't know if any of the engineers who worked on the R50 and R53 Mini project would have worked on the MGZ cars, I don't know. but. Um, Certainly, this is a very suitable car for roads like this. This uh, six-speed Getrog manual is really, really good. It's like a Bristol just walked past me. It is quite a heavy gear change. Uh, the gear knob probably is responsible for that. But it's probably better than the, the automatic that you can get as well. The Tritec engine was available in a lot of power outputs. In this country, the R50, R52 and R53 Minis, the R52 was the convertible that lasted until 2008, the R50 and R53 went to 2006. Um, they had um, various power outputs, the basic one was in the Mini 1, that was 90 horsepower, the Cooper had 115 horsepower, the slimmest resistance Cooper that I filmed in 2020, it was one of those, and then this uh, Cooper Rest originally had 163 horsepower before the facelift in 2004, and then after the facelift, like this one, 170 horsepower. There are also two higher performance versions of the, the Cooper Rest with supercharger, um, there was the John Cooper Works version with 210 horsepower, and then right at the end there was a GP edition of the John Cooper Works that had 215 horsepower. There are also some diesels available, 
But as usual, due to controversial government legislation and all kinds of other reasons, we don't talk about diesels on this channel. talk about is the precision of the steering and handling which is completely superb it is amazing somebody really 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 wanted to engineer very good driving characteristics into this car and of course the rover engineers who at least were partially responsible for the development of this car's ride and handling had sort of Good cars that they developed before. The R3 Rover 200 are actually handles and drives very well for a car like that, for example. Um, then they had things like the, uh, the R8, which can be engineered to drive really, really well. Some of the basic ones are, but it's interesting that they had that sort of legacy. And uh, this is this is very good, despite not having things like the rubber coat suspension, hydroelastic suspension, or some of the classic Mini's head. It drives really, really well. The engine feels very torquey, supercharged, gives you instant power, there's no lag, and this uh, Getrock 6 feet is very nice. The R65 gearbox that was introduced in the Rover R8 200 in 1989 was also used in um, the Mini 1 and Cooper until 2004, when they were also replaced by Getrock unit, but not the same as this. Uh, six speed manual. There's also an automatic available for the R53s like this, which is a different man uh, automatic, I think, from one which is in the Cooper and the uh, one. But if you're buying one of these cars, I'd probably recommend going for a manual. That's really you know, what these are all about. Oh, oh, railway. Not too bad, actually. I was told to ride on these. Particularly because we've got the um, firmer suspension in this and the standard Cooper S, and also the slightly larger wheels, it's going to be really bad. But actually, it, it's it's not as bad as I thought at all. I thought it would be really bad, um, like you know some real classic minis were. But it's it's pretty good. It's a very very enjoyable car to drive, and I have enjoyed it tremendously. So viewers, let's have a look at some uh, R50, R53, R52 trim levels. Obviously there were the standard ones which were the one Cooper, Cooper S. There was also Park Lane um, Special Edition based on the Cooper and a 7 Special Edition based on the 1. As far as the, the uh, Cooper S goes, there were actually some unique Special Editions for those as well such as the uh, Checkmate, the John Cooper Works Checkmate, and the John Cooper Works GP, which, uh, you know, were very, very fast. Should you consider an R50 or R53 Mini um, for your hard-earned budget of up to £1,000? Well, R53 is a bit of a moot point because I shouldn't really be filming this car on... No budget reviews. I don't think you can get one of these um, in good condition with an MOT for under a thousand. R50s, yeah, you might be able to. It'd be a little bit on the tatty side. You might have to pay maybe two to three thousand pounds for one of those now. Um, particularly because Mr. Richardson from Furious Driving has been doing his bit for publicising um, these cars. But uh, yes, I, I, I very much enjoyed it. Either you sort of want one of these or or you don't. Um, they're not perfect. Uh, but they are an awful lot of fun if you can find a good one. Anyway, thank you ever so much indeed once again for watching. Please don't forget to subscribe to the channel, like this video, leave a comment below. Uh, thank you to uh, Thomas for supplying this car once again, and uh, we shall see you again soon for more inexpensive motoring.